my webcam is being a pain in the butt and it keeps like shutting off on me okay hopefully other people get this one all right so this is my last little webcam thing for tonight um so yeah um I wanted to somewhat talk about this boy that I know. I've known him for about three years. I've liked him for that same amount of time. Um, one problem in this. We don't talk. Yeah, problem. Um, I have social disorders to where it's very hard for me to con- like, to communicate with somebody else I haven't known for a while. But I mean that I haven't talked to consistently for a while. So, yeah, the longer we put this off, the harder it is to talk to him. Um, personally, like, I'm not gonna say his name or anything. Um, his name is very unique, so obviously, um, if I do say it, he, everyone will know who he is, and I don't think I want that. So, I'm completely sure he already knows anyway, but, you know. So, what kind of sucks about boys is, like, you can never tell if they actually like you or they're just being a jackass and playing with you. But the thing is, it takes a lot of effort to play with somebody for three years. So that's the only thing where I'm like, wait, what? Like, he wouldn't play with me for three years, would he? Yeah, that's a lot of effort. That's a lot of time wasted. Unless I'm that entertaining. And let me tell you, I'm pretty entertaining. <laughs> but, because, um, I tend to hyperventilate in social situations. Um, I've passed out. It's very embarrassing. I do not like it all. Um, I tend to scream a lot. I tend to get very loud and obnoxious and nervous. I mean, a lot of people get nervous and, like, loud, but, like, I'm overly loud. It's horrible. So, anyway, I really want to hit the hay early tonight, so I'm trying to wrap this up. Um, I saw him around school a lot on last year. He just happened to be around a lot, and I saw him a lot. And it was, I mean, every time I saw him, like, we'd do this, like, smirk thing and just, like, smell each other. And it was nice. And it was like, hey, he knows I'm alive. Woo! And, like, you know, like, somebody gives a shit that I am breathing. This is beautiful. This is a great thing. Abby, you just burp. Why are you staring at my shoes? Sorry, my dog. Um, so, like, okay, she's more like my little sister, but still. My grandma calls her my child, but I don't know how that would be possible. Anyway, so, um, what happened? Sorry, like, my hand keeps, like, popping up from the camera. Um, this is what happened. Okay. I mean, there are many, many, many things. There's this one kid, I call him a chipmunk. He is really short. He's high-pitched voice. By the way, he's, like, 18. He's annoying. And he just likes to pick on everybody. I mean, he's picked on me ever since, like, fourth grade. I have a lot to pick on. I don't really care anymore. Well, the kid that I like is from a different country. And his language, his English, isn't that great. I mean, hey, it's pretty good. But it's not, like, you know, flawless. But, honestly, the kid that picks on him, let's call him Chipmunk, he speaks it better than him at times, so yeah, take that to the bank. And it's like really annoying. Like, why would you pick on this kid? Like, I remember the kid was kind of limping that day, and this was like around two years ago, like the beginning of no, it was actually the end of my sophomore year, and I'm a senior now. So I remember they were on like a stairwell at my school. There's like certain stairs. And I remember Chipmunk hit this kid's backpack while he was on the stairs. Like, there was a small altercation before the stairs, but I was like, wait, what the hell is that? And just kept walking, and I was right behind Chipmunk. Chipmunk had a huge backpack at the time, too, like the kid that I liked. Well, he hit the kid's backpack, and you could tell it hurt him. And I don't know 
why it hurt him or how it hurt him, but it did. And all I remember is him whirling around his fist in Chipmunk's face and saying, you want to fight. And the kid, Chipmunk, he jumps back into me. I remember I screamed. Because I literally thought I was going to fall to my death. No joke. Because the railing um, at those on those stairs, there's like a wood railing. And it's like this big and like this like this thick. So like you're, you can't grab it. And I remember I could feel my hand slipping down the railing. And I was like, oh my god, I'm going to like fall and get killed, aren't I? Or like at least like get my head split open. And I fell into my friend at the time, she's my friend, and, um, I remember the look on his face, like, he looked like he felt so bad, and at the same time, like, he just didn't know what to do, and he was scared, and he was, looked sad, too, and he just turned turned around and walked away. I mean, honestly, I was proud of him. The chipmunk deserved it, but I think once he knows someone else was pretty much in danger you can't do that and he um we were up the stairs and said my friend you know what I'm not just gonna let this go and I went up to the kid and I'm like do you even know him like you know yelling at him like you don't know that kid why the hell are you acting like that you're being a jackass and that was how it ended but really, that was how it all started. I mean, I've been in so much stupid, like, situations with this kid. It's, like, funny. Not chipmunk, the kid that I like. And he, um... One time he went to trip a kid in front of me. He ended up tripping me into, like, a wall. And I almost, like, broke my wrist. And it was really funny. Like, oh my god. I felt like I made such a scene out of it then. And I feel, like, really bad. Like, I didn't mean to. But I, I was just really bad at dealing with pain at that point. I'm better now, <laughs> but he definitely felt bad, and I felt even worse, but <laughs> when, when I think about it now, though, it's, like, funny, because, you know, it's over, I have a feeling he didn't remember that, but, um, since I don't want to take up too much of your time, this is where it really got bad. There's a part in my life that I keep hidden under complete wraps because I'm ashamed. And don't think that this is some sort of juicy secret. It's a big secret. It's a bad one. It's one I'm not going to share. I'm just telling you it's a part of my life that I can't tell anybody. And that's a very big burden. Very, very big burden. Because you have to walk around. You can't say anything. You can't talk about your own life. So, um... I cried for a month straight. Couldn't keep my head up. It was like I was drowning in slow motion. It was like nobody could see me. I was waving and jumping and screaming and it was still like nobody could hear me, nobody could see me. And then I just kind of went, no. <laughs> Can't do this. I don't know what's going on. Where am I going? Where's my life going? Why has this hurt me so much? I mean, I had a lot of runs with this kid, but... About a week before I really started drowning, I saw him. When I was with my friends, and I was so close to saying hello. I don't know why I didn't say it. And... God, I would pay to see the look on that boy's face again. I swear to God I would. And I 
I was walking in the hall and I saw him again. He looked at me. I couldn't even look at him. Only a smile at him or a blush. Couldn't even look at him. I saw him again that day. Same thing. Couldn't look at him. Because I didn't want to be happy at that time. Because I was so ashamed. I was so mad. I was so upset. I went to guidance and they wouldn't hear me. Today... I was um, in guidance and they had rescheduled me already and I had wait because my counselor was busy, which is fine. I mean, I like my counselor, he's cool, but I had been waiting. I told my friend about it and she said, well, they have 50 plus kids. And I said, I know that. And she's like, well, you can't expect me to be your therapist. And I said, do you know how expensive help is? Like, help is expensive. I mean, I have a single parent. And my grandparents. But we... My mom loves me. She does. I know she does. But she has said to me before, it's expensive, Alexandria, it's expensive. Help is so expensive. This is the only help I can afford. Going to a guidance counselor and saying, look, the effects of my abuse haven't worn off. I'm still thinking about my cousin's boyfriend who committed suicide. I can't let go of him. I'm waking up every night with nightmares. I can't sleep. When I do, I do wake up those nightmares. My horse is leaving. My other horse suddenly is PMSing. My friend's Slowly, one by one, they start leaving because I was too dramatic and I had too many problems and they had their own. I was wrong to put my problems on them. And for all any of you who, is watch, who are watching all of this, God bless you. Because this is long and emotional and you're probably thinking I'm a freak or a drama queen and you'll shut it off. But I only have like less than two minutes left in this thing. It took about a month till I realized I saw him less and less and less until I realized I was lucky if I saw him once every two to four weeks. And when I did see him, he just stared at me with this sad look on his face and I couldn't tell if he was upset because the game was over because of our fun was over, or maybe he thought that I didn't like him anymore. The thing is, I can't even imagine somebody liking me like that. So it's hard for me to imagine that he actually was upset because he thought I didn't like him anymore. Or maybe he realized that we actually have to talk. Or maybe he realized that I'm messed up like everybody else. Either way, he left me too. So this is what I'm saying. But I'll never know why I'm saying it. Never do what I did.